So we'll start by looking at King and Two Knights versus a lone king. So it is possible to checkmate with the King and Two Knights versus a lone king, but it's not possible to force it. The longest forced win in King and Two Knights versus King is one move. So if the material on the board is a king and two knights versus a king, and the position is not checkmate in one move, then the position is a draw with optimal play. And the reason for this has to do with stalemate, which is a very counterintuitive rule, because intuitively you might think that black should be able to win no matter whose turn it is to move here, but if it's white to move here, then the rules of chess classify this position as a draw because white is not in check, but white doesn't have any legal moves. And intuitively, this shouldn't be a draw, but because of this counterintuitive rule of stalemate, there's certain endgames where the attacker has enough material to checkmate, but the checkmate can't be forced because of stalemate. In the case of king and two knights versus king, the defender is always going to have a move that avoids checkmate. If this position were to occur, then it would have to occur with white to move, which would be a draw. This position can't occur with black to move unless white blunders, because there's no way that white's king could have been forced to h1 because white has the square f1. And since knights alternate colors, it's impossible for a knight to cover f1 and also plan to cover h1 on the next move. So if we set up a position where the knight is covering f1 and stopping white's king from escaping, and the other knight is checking against the king on g1, white's king is being forced into the corner, but it's impossible for the knight that's covering f1 to deliver checkmate it's going to be a draw by stalemate. So whenever the defender's king is forced into the corner, the attacker's knight is always going to be one move too short to deliver checkmate. It's going to be a draw by stalemate first. So the best way to convince yourself that king and two knights versus king is a draw is to examine all the positions where there's checkmate in one move and then try to backtrack and compose a position that can forcibly play into that position, and then realize that you can't do it. So you can't set up a position of king and two knights versus king where there's a forced mate in more than one move. You can only set up positions where there's checkmate in one move, or already checkmate. So it's impossible to compose a position that can forcibly play into this position with black to move because white's king would have had the f1 escape square. It's only possible to reach this position where it's white to move and to draw by stalemate. So a king and two knights don't have a problem forcing the enemy king into a corner. The problem is stalemate. There's also this unique checkmate that occurs away from a corner, but it's not that hard to see that there's no way that white could have been forced into this position. White would have had an escape toward the center. If the rules of chess permitted pieces to simultaneously occupy the same squares, then it would be possible to checkmate with a king and two knights versus a lone king, because the king and knight can stalemate the king on an edge if they can simultaneously occupy the same square, and then the other knight can deliver checkmate. But the rules of chess don't allow pieces to simultaneously occupy the same squares, so this type of checkmate is impossible. So there's three main ways that you could make king and two knights versus king a win by changing the rules a little bit. You can permit pieces to simultaneously occupy the same square, which would make for another mating pattern. You could classify stalemated positions as wins instead of draws, or you could permit passing, which would eliminate the stalemate rule. So the first two are pretty easy to understand, but the third one might not be that easy to convince yourself of unless you see it. So I'll just kind of show 
how the attacker would win a king and two knights versus king in game if passing was permitted and stalemate was omitted. So, so cornering the enemy king is a little bit harder when he's allowed to pass, but the attacker can use direct checks with the knight to force the enemy king closer to a corner. And it's harder than in judo chess because in judo chess, the attacker can keep direct opposition with the kings at all times. At the same time, he's maneuvering the knights. So this is a little bit harder than mating with two knights in judo chess because the attacker can't always keep direct opposition with the kings. So kind of has to anticipate the enemy king moving around the king. So this isn't really that hard on an 8x8 chessboard, but it's not really clear whether it would be possible on any size chessboard or what the largest board you could do it on would be. But it is clear that king and two knights versus king should be a win on any size board in judo chess. So black mates with knight to g4 followed by knight to f2, the same way you would mate in judo chess, but if this was regular chess, then it would be stalemate after knight to g4. So by now you should understand that king and two knights versus king is a draw in traditional chess, but it can be a win in certain variants that don't involve the stalemate rule. And you can also use similar reasoning to understand why mating with king, knight, and bishop versus king in regular chess can only be forced in a corner that's the same color as the bishop. It is possible in a corner that's not the same color as the bishop, but it can't really be forced. But unlike in king and two knights versus king, there do exist positions where there's mate and twos. But white's king could have avoided playing into this position by escaping toward the center. The king, knight, and bishop have no problem driving the enemy king into a corner, but if it's a corner that's not the same color as the bishop, then there's no checkmate that can be forced. We get the same kind of problem that we got with king and two knights versus king, where the knights a move too short to deliver checkmate. Checkmate can't be forced in a corner that's not the same color as the bishop, but it would be possible in judo chess or in other variants where the stalemate rule doesn't apply. So, in regular chess, so when you have a king, knight, and bishop against a lone king, Checkmate can only be forced in a corner that's the same color as the bishop. So if the defender's king is in a corner that's not the same color as the bishop, then you have to use this kind of counterintuitive method of forcing the king away from the corner and into the correct corner while making sure that it can't return to one of the wrong corners. So black is able to force white's king away from the a1 corner and at the same time stop white's king from reaching the symmetrically equivalent h8 corner white's king is going to be forced into the h1 corner no matter what and it gets easy once white's king is trapped within the h5 d1 diagonal the diagonal with five squares on it once white's king is trapped within the fifth diagonal, the mating process becomes pretty easy, and it's pretty easy to get the defender's king into the corner. It's easy to entomb the defender's king within the third diagonal after he's been entombed within the fifth diagonal. When it's a bishop that's sealing off the third square from the corner, and it's a knight that's giving check on the second square from the corner, then it's really easy for the bishop to deliver the final checkmate attacking the corner square. The bishop has the ability to move to control the corner square after it's been controlling the third square from the corner. The bishop always controls the same color, so the bishop has no problem juggling control of the corner square and the third square from the corner. So in order to help better understand the mating patterns of two minor pieces, we can kind of isolate the important abilities of each minor piece 
and understand what exactly makes the checkmate possible. So the main mating pattern is the corner mating pattern where one of the pieces needs to be a bishop that's the same color as the corner and the other piece needs to be anything that can attack the second square from the corner which can be a knight or a bishop that's not the same color as the corner and then after the king is attacked and driven into the corner the bishop can then move to deliver checkmate so that's the corner mating pattern and then there's also the edge mating pattern where check occurs against a king who's already in the corner and that piece needs to be able to attack the corner square while simultaneously attacking the third square from the corner so both of these mating patterns require that there's a bishop that's the same color as the corner and the other piece is a knight or a bishop that's not the same color as the corner. So in conclusion, king and two bishops versus king is a win in any of the corners, assuming that the bishops control squares of opposite colors. And king and two knights versus king is a draw. Mate can't be forced in any of the corners. King, knight, and bishop versus king is a win, but mate can only be forced in a corner that's the same color as the bishop. If you're playing judo chess or another variant where stalemate doesn't apply, then a king in any combination of two minor pieces can force checkmate against a king, and it doesn't matter which corner. And of course there's the exception that two same colored bishops can't checkmate, although they can stalemate, and I think they can force it on any size board. But the same's probably not true for king and two knights. I think it's pretty obvious that king and two opposite colored bishops can force checkmate on any size board. I think a king, knight, and bishop can force stalemate on any size board and can force checkmate on any size board that has a corner that's the same color as the bishop.